struggling with the idea of fairness this week. How do we be fair to all when we want to make choices that reflect what we think is right and what we think is wrong? How do we be fair to everyone when we want to use our influence, our power, our position, and our wealth to make things go our way? I've been especially intrigued by Kim Davis, the clerk of courts in Kentucky, who has refused to issue all marriage licenses since the Supreme Court ruling that all people, all couples, are able to be married. I'm impressed by her willingness to face contempt of court charges, as well as any other action the court uses to try to bring resolution to these issues. And at the same time, I'm equally intrigued by her life up until now. To put it simply, she has led a complicated life with men and children. And when she converted to Christianity four years ago, when she became born again, she believes she left that life behind. And while she is unconcerned about the afterlife before her conversion, she now believes issuing a marriage license to all who have come before her makes her eligible for the gates of hell. And while Ms. Davis believes God forgave her indiscretions before her conversion, she now believes God will not forgive her if she obeys the law of the land by issuing marriage licenses to all who properly come before her. Somehow, giving a marriage license to an abusive, abusive couple is okay, while giving a license to respectful, loving, same-sex couples is not okay. And while it's easy to criticize and question and make fun of and take pot shots at Ms. Davis, I suspect we are all quite culpable when it comes to picking and choosing who we find acceptable and who we do not. Ask anyone in the Black Lives Matter group, ask anyone who doesn't have enough money to hire a private attorney to go to court with them, and they will assure us that we are all quite guilty when it comes to picking and choosing to whom we show partiality. We find it easy to choose a favorite when we rely on our own prejudices and preferences. And at the same time, we're so indwelled, we, we have so much part of a system of partiality that we've kind of accepted it as a way of life. We fail to notice it. We find it difficult to pick through the complexities of situations and much easier to fall back on favoritism. At this point at 8.45, I asked if it was understandable, if this was clear, if I needed to say more, and somebody said, say more. <laughs> Too bad, you're gonna get it. So, it comes to this week, I had to find a new doctor. You know how much fun that is when you move to a new town and have to find a new doctor. And so I was in urgent care, and I said, so who do you recommend? And the nurse very appropriately went through a whole list of people, male, female, all sorts of ethnicities based on the names, and I chose based on the name I liked. <laughs> I didn't go through and do the complex work of looking at their avatar scores, which is their patient reviews. I didn't go through and find out more about them. I could have gone online and do, done my homework. I just chose the name I liked. Smart or wrong? <laughs> Probably not very smart, but it's what I did. I let my preferences and my prejudices guide who I chose for my health care of all things. We find it difficult to pick through the complexities of situations and much easier to fall back on favoritism. Now James wrote during a time when choosing favorites was a way of life. If you are wealthy, if you had position, if you had power, you could decide who would benefit. And if you were poor, if you were a slave in those times, if you had no position or power whatsoever, you did everything you could to curry favor with those who had wealth, power, and position. Fairness and justice were victims of partiality, and the culture of the day bought into the system of partiality. Now, I sincerely believe that we all desire fairness and justice in theory. But in practice, fairness, justice, those are difficult. The desire to be fair and to treat others as children of God is complex because we are remarkably complex people living in remarkably complex circumstances. And we tend to look at what's going on around someone rather than what's going on inside of them. And we make decisions of support, criticism, based on what we favor rather than on anything that we can legitimately find in the Bible. 
And I think we see that in this case. We can look at Ms. Davison on one hand say she is absolutely right to deny rights to same-sex couples based on her faith. Or we can look at Ms. Davis and wonder how she can accept God's love and forgiveness without offering that same grace to others. And most likely, we all just thank God that we are not in her shoes having to make any of those decisions. See, when we look to judge another, when we look to determine what is right and what is wrong, when we think about prejudices and preferences, when we try to be fair, James gave us one principle to follow. Love others as you love yourself. Love others as you love yourself. And James summed that up with one commandment that covered all the bases, love others as you love yourself, Call, and he even called it the royal law because, as Jesus said, it rose above and summed up all the commandments in the Hebrew and scripture, Christian scriptures. But here's the problem. Most of us do love others as we love ourselves. Let me explain. Who is our worst critic? We are. Who do we put last? When we think about forgiveness and generosity, we put ourselves last. Who puts ourselves last when it comes to showing fairness, justice, and generosity? Oh, we do. And most of us will go out of our way, way out of our way, to care for and love others when we would not do the same thing for ourselves. Somebody else isn't feeling well, they should stay home. We're not feeling well, we're going to show up because it's our duty. The problem with loving others as we love ourselves is too many of us do. <laughs> we show partiality based on our belief that we are created a whole lot better than some and not as good as others. We accept injustice because we're so willing to be unfair to ourselves. We treat others with judgment, partiality, crit criticism, and stinginess because we are our harshest critics, we are our harshest judges, we are most partial to ourselves, and we are the stingiest with ourselves. We find it difficult to be generous to the point of sacrifice with others because we cannot be generous to the point of sacrifice with ourselves. We find it difficult to accept faults in others because we look in the mirror and we simply cannot accept our own faults. We find it difficult to offer forgiveness, acceptance, and love to others because in our heart of hearts, deep down, deep down where we really live, where we really have to get honest with ourselves, in the still of the night when we're laying there thinking, we often believe that we are not worthy of God's love and God's forgiveness and God's acceptance. The problem is we do love others as we love ourselves. Life is complex. Doing the right thing is complex. Figuring out which passages of the Bible to give more weight than others, that's complex. Deciding when we are right and others are wrong, that's complex. Sometimes even figuring out how to love ourselves is complex. When we say love others as we love ourselves, I find that so difficult, so I, I prefer to put it this way. We can love others as much as God loves us. Isn't that easier? We can love others as much as God loves us. Now, I'm gonna to continue to watch the news from Kentucky, and I pray that Ms. Davis and the courts come to some mutually acceptable agreement. I pray that the actions and the decisions made will be based on fairness and justice rather than who wields the most power, position, and wealth. And frankly, I don't know how the case will turn out. But I am confident that fairness and justice in our lives and fairness and justice in our world cannot and will not take place until we all learn to love others as much as we love ourselves. 
or easier for some of us, until we all learn to love others as much as God loves us. May it be so.